all that time wasting time talking about my career and I realized we forgot to talk about Raw. But you know, it's fitting because I wasted less time talking about my career than Raw wasted last night. The show wasn't bad, but I swear to God, this was at best a 90-minute show that they found a way to stretch out to three hours. And it felt there like six. was nothing on this show. So it opens up with this long segment with Riddle and Orton and the Street Profits, which then leads to entrances for an eight-man, which then leads to a 22-minute match, which then leads to the post-match. The first 40 minutes of this show was centered around AJ, Omos, Ziggler, and Rude versus the Street Profits, Randy Orton, and Riddle. Well, don't forget KO and Seth Rollins as well, too. Well, that's that's that was only like 10 seconds. I'm talking like they spent 40 <laughs> so minutes. What, so like, it, what's what it felt like on the it, rest yeah, of this. With the rest of it being terminally really long, yes. Now, we had a lot of great workers in this match. So, I mean, and AJ Styles is back after being gone for two weeks with no explanation. So, the match was, was hit and miss. There was a lot of good stuff. But then... You know, they tag in Omos, and this guy is, God bless him, he is horrible. And the thing that irritates me is he doesn't have to be. Because all you have to do is get him in there to be a giant. Like, I don't want to say it's not that hard, but you know what's easier than running around really fast and trying to do karate and all this other crap they're having him do? Just be a giant that stands there and runs people over and and destroys them. No, he's got to do spinning kicks and... They all look horrible, and he's like seven feet tall. He still can't kick above these people's chests. It's a disaster. So then finally at the end, there's this big schmoz, and the teams start fighting each other because we got Survivor Series coming up, Raw versus SmackDown, and the storyline is everybody and every team hates each other. How could you possibly care about Survivor Series? So anyway, in the middle of all this schmoz, poor Riddle gets hit with the tree slam, and then he's down for like five minutes while they do all their spots, just laying in the middle of the ring. And then finally Ziggler goes in there and pins his dead body. I mean, he's been down forever. And then Orton live, uh, lays him out with the RKO after the match. So 40 minutes right there. We had a show-long segment with Kevin Owens going around and asking all the baby faces if they trusted him. And they're all kind of iffy about it. We had the announcement that Adam Pierce. The GM who now were going from babyface GMs to heel GMs, him and Sonya both going heel, he says on Saturday they announced all of the teams for Raw versus SmackDown, and I was disgusted that Dominic was put on that team because everybody is a former champion except Dominic. But you know what, Dominic? If you don't lose tonight, you can keep your spot on the team. So his opponent is Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley kills this kid, makes him look like a geek. And then they announce that now this geek is off the team and Lashley is on the team. Which, by the way, led to a segment later where Ray's furious. And he's like, bro, if you didn't want the guy on the team, why'd you put him on the team for the first place? Like, why don't you just put Lashley in? And if you think I screwed up that line, you should have poor Ray. Uh, Ray could not get this promo out. But at least he was supposed to be so angry that it made sense. But anyway, they made Dominic look like a geek, and Pierce is going heel, and as was written on the front page report for the show, Dominic looked like a feeble loser. I could not have said it better myself. That's how they try to make baby faces, by the way. And and make sure you highlight that line, too. Say it again. Adam Pierce is going heel. Yeah, that's what we need. Heel GMs. Yeah, Adam Pierce is all upset about, about the teams because, you know, I guess he wants Raw to win, even though he's the GM of both brands. Like, what in the hell difference does it make who wins brand versus brand when you're the GM of both brands? None of this stuff makes any sense. But we have to do it every year because it's their goofy Halloween, Thanksgiving, whatever tradition. Whatever. Whatever. Sonya wasn't enough. Holidays in in whatever that month is. Sonya wasn't enough. Sonya no. working angles with Naomi that they don't really pay off. That's not enough. We have to have Adam Pierce be a heel idiot GM too. Like they, he and Paul Heyman were the only non wrestlers, and there's barely any wrestlers to take seriously. But like, at least he had something built up with Adam Pierce where there was some credibility to this guy. 
Now there's just none. Because you're an idiot, you're a goof, you find Brock Lesnar a million bucks or whatever it was, okay, fine. You know, that was cornball, it's something they wanted him to do, and he did a good job carrying it out. And then you bring him back to say, hey, uh, we made these teams up and, and we were burying the fact that, you know, we advertise these on, on Twitter. If that was a decision made by him, he's an idiot as well, too. But we go ahead and we post these on social media. I made the teams. Now I'm really embarrassed about putting you on there. And we can't take care of this before the show starts. We have to come out here and I need to call you out to the middle of the ring to disappoint you, to insult your son right in front of your face and then have Bobby Lashley come down and kill your son in front of his face. This is dumb. It was just dumb. Bro, it's heat. It's just heat, dude. Like dewdrop heat. Big E. Right? Like Shotzi heat. Big E beat Chad Gable in a non title match. The wrestling was good. It was five minutes. We had Sonya Deville backstage. She's, I guess maybe she made these teams. It's Carmella, Zelina, Rhea, Liv, and Bianca. A bunch of other women show up. They're all angry that they're not on the team, including, by the way, Nikki Ash, who is one half of the tag team champions. She can't get on this team. But anyway, it's announced that the the team members, as a way to get these team members ready to fight for the Raw brand, we're going to put them in a five-way where they all fight each other tonight. All right, whatever. We couldn't get Becky and Nikki Ash over to uh, to the UK for the... Uh... No, they had to be here for Raw. We had Drake Maverick versus Reggie in a 24-7 title match in the ring. Ends up with all the geeks running down, distraction, Drake Maverick wins the title, Akira pins Drake Maverick, Corey Graves pins Tozawa, Byron Saxon pins Graves, Drake Maverick pins Saxon, Reggie pins Drake Maverick, he runs off with the belt, so now until the end of time we have to hear Byron Saxon bragging that he pinned Corey Graves. Mm. Fatal Five Way, Liv, Carmella, Zelina, Bianca, and Rhea Ripley. Between the video packages, the commercials, the ring entrances for all of the women, the post-match, the pre-match, the 16-minute match itself, another 35 minutes of television time for this match. And depending on who was in, it was hit or miss. And finally, Carmella went for a pin, but uh, she got cradled, crucifix pin by Morgan, Liv Morgan wins. Now it'll be Liv Morgan versus Becky Lynch at some point down the road, which assuredly Liv Morgan will be losing. Well, I apologize to any Becky Lynch stands out there, too. Apparently she was over on that tour, so. Well, she was, but then they brought her back for this. So then, <laughs> so then, in another segment that between commercials, video packages, interview segments, the ring announcements, the ring introductions, whatever, when they walk down to the ring, Another 35-minute segment. It is Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens. They wrestled for 23 minutes. They all fall out of the ring. Kevin Owens bonks into Big E. Kevin Owens can't make it back in. He is counted out of the ring. 23 minutes and 46 seconds for a count out. And then Kevin Owens flips his lid and he destroys Big E. And that's how the show goes off the air. Yes, I said the show wasn't that bad. It was better than it sounds because the people when they were actually wrestling for 23 minutes, I mean, the wrestling was good. But if you look at its storylines and logic and build the Survivor Series, it flat out sucked. But if you're a fan of the wrestlers wrestling in the ring and giving it their all, the show was, was good. So there you go. Take your pick. I think a lot of these, these WWE fans, they really don't think. You know what I'm saying? They just watch the guys doing flips and moves. Because if they thought about it, they couldn't possibly like it. It's like, it, it, I, I, I don't know how they could, but it's they don't think about this stuff. I guess they, I don't know. Here's the one thing I know is Kevin Owens has been getting screwed over by Roman Reigns since what last year. So he began his year getting screwed over by Roman Reigns, and he and Big E teamed up all summer long. All summer long, he, he teamed up with Big E. Was involved with things and. You know, against Sami Zayn and whoever it would be, uh, Baron Corbin or what. So all of a sudden now, not last week, Kevin Owens has to play like he doesn't see Seth Rollins hitting Big E. 
And but he does, and Big E knows it. He apologizes afterward. Yet Big E is treating him like trash because now we're going to retrofit a story where, well, Kevin Owens, you know, none of his partners like him. He turns on everybody. He's a miserable guy. And yeah, that that was kind of the case. But how they set this whole thing up, like at no point do I feel like Kevin Owens did something wrong here? You know, yes, he saw, and this was an issue again, talked about it last week. The referee should have been blocking his view, but that didn't happen. So they go and they do this. It's just, it was a cheap way to get to Kevin Owens getting heat and turning on Big E like they need more heels and like they need less heroes. I just, everything about it has sucked and has fallen flat for me. And I just think it's, it's, uh, to me, it's a it's a waste. The Big E, Kevin Owens, you know, them in the ring with each other ought to be great, you know, for sure. And maybe this is Kevin Owens' last hurrah. I don't know what it is, but to me, the whole thing has fallen flat from Jump Street last week to how the whole thing played out, looking so stupid, where everybody looked stupid, and now all the baby faces look like jerks. Sure, Rey Mysterio had to deal with what Adam Pierce was doing, but he still blew off Kevin Owens and made again everything. Uh, to me, I had more sympathy for Kevin Owens in a way coming out of this thing because if you're just watching the last two episodes of this show and you're seeing this, how is Kevin Owens the bad guy? Why is he a terrible person? You know, all of a sudden, now we're, we're, we're retro doing this. Any good faith he has built up, any good faith he had on SmackDown, which is a show that people are supposed to be watching too, all of that just goes away? Why? Because Seth Rollins is a master manipulator? He's a douche who came out on the show and said, Kevin, nobody likes you. And then the whole show, nobody likes him. So is Seth Rollins the baby face here for telling the truth? It's just the whole thing sucks. I'm sorry. It just it's weak and it and it, and it sucks. And I know somebody, will, well, what about this on AEW? I don't care about what's on AEW that also sucks or in New Japan that also sucks. This is not a very effective story to me at all. And it doesn't have me hooked. And it's supposed to be their main event story and it's fallen absolutely flat and oh by the way isn't Big E supposed to be facing Roman Reigns soon bro this person here says why would Adam Pierce care about whether Raw wins or not when he's a GM of both shows all of these questions it's all yeah. the same thing why do we have a Survivor Series and why do we have a brand split I would be fine with a brand split if, like, all of your storylines made sense. Like, if it really was the one time a year that the Raw and SmackDown wrestlers faced each other. But it's not. We just did a draft. Literally the entire Raw team were all on SmackDown. They were loyal to SmackDown for a year. They've been on Raw for a week, and now they have to fight for Raw with a GM who seems to care whether one side or the other wins, even though he's a GM of both shows. I mean, it's not hard to do this, but it's just, it's, it's, whatever. Have I'm telling you, explained? I'm telling you, these people, these fans, they are happy. I'm not saying they're dumb, but I'm saying they're happy not thinking about it. They watch you, it in a vacuum. You tell me what is going on, and I'm going to go along with it. It's a it daytime does, show. It doesn't make sense. Well, who cares? I'm, I just won't think about it then. I will I will listen to Adam Pierce caring which side wins. And I won't think for two seconds why the GM of both shows would want one team to win over the other team. It doesn't make any sense. But you just watch it. You watch your stars. You look at their pretty bodies. You watch their moves. And then you're ready for the next show. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Eric, Tyler Mullins wants to know, if you had no restrictions at all in your diet, what food would you love to eat over and over again? Ah, uh, cup of noodles is my favorite. Your choice is cup of noodles? Uh-huh. Not a steak or escargot? Nope. cup o noodles Yeah, that's the only thing that doesn't upset my stomach. Well, I think the, the question, Granny, is if it didn't upset your stomach, if there were no consequences, you could just eat I'm, any I food. Still, I still say cup of noodles. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.